Hey, it's Nikachu, and today we are going to take a look at how to shuffle a double sleeve deck of Magic the Gathering cards. This video will prepare you for tournaments as you are going to learn proper technique, what to be looking out for from your opponent, and also rules surrounding shuffling and also accidents that may happen during shuffling. So let's go shuffle some cards. So we're in the dining room. Say hello to the plants. I never say hello to them. So here's my deck, and this is 60 cards, double sleeved. They are single sleeved, but also they're double sleeved. They've got the inner sleeves inside them. Let me let me show you. See within the sleeve, there is another sleeve. That's right, double double protection. You don't want double protection in all cases when it comes to sleeving things, but when it comes to your deck, you want to double sleeve it. So here's the deal. Um, there is basically only two ways to shuffle a deck in my opinion and all the other techniques are absolute garbage. I'm either shuffling with the deck to my right or I can shuffle the deck to my left. And in both ways, uh, I will not be able to see the bottom cards in either scenario, no chance, and it will be a very sufficient shuffle. Now, the thing is, most of you out there, you can't be looking at the bottom card. You have to be able to shuffle the cards without looking at the deck, all right? I see most of you out there, you're like, as if this is rocket science, oh, you gotta make sure it's put in just the right way, or else the whole thing is gonna fall out of your hands, and maybe that's true. I see the technique is just terrible out there. So let's just start off with what you should be doing. You gotta be gentle with your deck. You gotta be gentle, you gotta cradle it like a baby, hold it softly. A lot of you're holding it really tight. What are you doing that for? So yeah, when you grab the cards and when you try to put them in, it's like you're trying to squeeze them into something. You gotta be gentle. Hold it lightly. Hold the deck lightly. Look, just hold it gently in your hand, all right? Let the cards just fall into place easily. Now another thing, make sure that the card sleeves, the openings are, are on the outside. That should not be the side that you're forcing into the deck. It should be on the closed side. So the closed side is the side that you're gonna be shuffling inwards. Because if you do it the other way around, occasionally, like a corner will jam inside the sleeve, you're gonna break the sleeve, you're gonna waste the sleeve, you're gonna waste time, and like, it's not a very efficient shuffle. So you're holding your deck gently. You're shuffling, cutting in on the bottom side of the deck. So there's two ways of doing this. The first one, this is left-handed. In my left hand, the deck is facing this way. The back of the deck is facing away and your head always should be turned the other direction so that you can never see the back of the card. And of course, you as my opponent also cannot see the back of the card. And then with, I guess, with practice, you can just feel, you can feel. You know, it'll take, it might take a little bit of practice, but you can feel for the deck where the, the, the bottom has to meet the other cards and you just shuffle it in. But you can't, be lo you can't be looking at the deck. Don't be looking at the deck. You gotta be looking away. I'm not, but, that's not to say that your eyes can't go anywhere else. Where should your eyes be? Your eyes should be looking at your opponent or your opponent's deck. Now, this is very important because you wanna be paying attention to any shenanigans that they're doing on that side. This is a once, one rare time where you, you can look at your opponent's deck, your opponent can look at your deck, and it's nothing weird, it's okay. Are they sufficiently shuffling the deck? Are they shuffling it enough times? By the way, what is a sufficiently shuffled deck? A deck is considered perfectly randomized if you shuffle it seven times. But that's not how the rules for Magic the Gathering work. The rules are the deck needs to be shuffled up to a point where you do not know the order of the deck anymore. So if you for some reason knew where all these cards were, Maybe you knew some cards were at the top, you knew some cards at the bottom, you knew some cards were clumped up. All that matters is that the deck is sufficiently shuffled that you no longer know what the order is. Because if you had to shuffle the deck seven times, we don't got time for that. I mean, there's a lot of tournament situations. You're shuffling every like three times a turn. We don't got time for that. So you just have to shuffle it until it's sufficiently shuffled that you don't know the order anymore. And you wanna pay attention to where your opponent's eyes are going. They shouldn't be looking at their own deck. They should never be doing that. So that's enough for the cards being shuffled on the left if I'm gonna be doing it on the right. Now I'm right-handed, so my dominant hand is the one that's going to be guiding the cards into the deck. Deck's over here, cards are facing this way. My head going this way, but my eyes, gotta keep those eyes on the opponent. 
You always keep the eyes on the opponent. Keep your eyes on their deck. Make sure no funny stuff is happening. Now at the same time, I'm making sure that the deck, when it's getting shuffled, I'm putting a few cards at the front to make sure that the front is naturally shuffled. Sometimes I'll make sure that this sh I'm shuffling at the back so the back is naturally shuffled. Get a good mix of the thing just perfectly going in the middle. So a little bit at the front, a little bit at the back. And with enough practice, and you can be practicing on your own. You can, don't need to wait to go to a tournament in order to figure this out. You can do this at home. I love shuffling. I could shuffle all day if I could. Let's quickly talk about what is not a shuffle, and that is pile shuffling. This pile shuffling is when you're dividing the cards out into piles. But the, the problem with this is that it's not really randomizing anything. You're basically just creating an order. And um, it's not considered a shuffle. If you try to do this in a tournament, the judge will tell you, uh, no, you gotta shuffle that thing up. This thing is not good enough. But I do this every single time because it's a really good way to count your deck, to make sure I am presenting 60 cards to my opponent. Because if you're missing a card, or you have one too many cards, that can be a problem. So once you're done shuffling your deck, it's time to present it to your opponent. And your opponent is gonna present their deck to you. And a lot of people ask, why do we let our opponents shuffle the deck? Why can't they just cut it? I mean, couldn't they, in theory, manipulate the damn thing? But in, pre in, in actuality, uh, most people are shuffling the deck fair. But it's really important that we're allowed to shuffle our opponent's deck and vice versa, because maybe the opponent cheated by stacking their deck. The single most common way to cheat in Magic the Gathering is called mana weaving. Let me explain. In this pile, I have all my spells. In this pile, I have all my lands. Now, a one big part about Magic the Gathering is the luck factor, and people hate it. People hate when they draw too much of one resource or the other. They hate when they draw too many lands. Mana flooding. They hate when they draw too few. Mana screw. So, what do players end up doing? Is that they are going to proportion out perfectly the lands and spells throughout their entire deck so that it is evenly dispersed. This is called mana weaving. See, two spells here, one land there. Two spells here, one land there. And it will be impossible for them to have a very bad hand. Mana weaving, by the way, is cheating. That's right. I might be calling some of you out right now. Some of you out there right now are like, what? I'm not actually allowed to do that? No! No, you're not! And I know that this is true because so many people who complain about the online shuffler dealing them bad hands fully openly admit that they are stacking their deck through mana weaving when they play Paper Magic. So now I have here a perfectly mana weaved version of my deck. If I draw seven cards from any point in this deck, it's never going to be a terrible hand. It will be a perfectly balanced hand, and all the cards that I draw on top are going to come out perfect. It's going to be beautiful. And so this is why you have to shuffle your opponent's decks, because so many people think that they can game the system, that they're allowed to do this, but they are absolutely not. So when my opponent comes to the table and goes, just shows, shows me the deck, doesn't even show me one shuffle, you better believe I'm shuffling the hell out of that damn thing. I'm gonna shuffle it 20 times if I have to. Same thing if they just do like, they show up, give a once over, and then give it to me. I mean, if you're not proving to me that you shuffled your deck, then I'm making damn sure that thing is getting shuffled. And no, in no way that I'm going to let my opponent get away with that. So a question you might ask is, well, how much should we be shuffling our opponent's deck? And honestly, it depends how much my opponent is making an effort to shuffle. If I'm, I mean, I'm looking at them shuffling and I mean, if they shuffle it pretty well and uh, I think they're doing everything proper and they present the deck to me, I, hey, I might just give it a good once over. And then when it's done, uh, I always cut the deck. You always have to cut your opponent's deck. If you don't cut the deck, then you could look like a cheater. Because only cheaters 
do not cut the deck when presenting it back to their opponent. Because if a cheater wanted to shuffle certain cards to the top, it would still be on the top when giving back to the opponent. But if you cut the deck, and I like to just put it on the table, lift the top part up, take the middle part, put it here, and then give it back, Hey, if I shoveled anything to the top, it's now buried in the middle. Say, hey, I'm innocent, all right? I'm not doing anything funny with your deck. And I'd like to say, I like putting the deck on the table and then doing that cut. Because I, if you're doing it in your hand, there can be some funny stuff that happens. Like people can do fake cuts where like I take the bottom half of the deck, put it on the table, then put the top half back on top, give it back. And I mean, I didn't actually cut anything. Whereas if I'm doing it directly on the table, take the top off, take the middle, put the middle on top. Hey, there was no shenanigans here, all right? So I always cut the deck before I give it back to my opponent. And if my opponent presents my deck to me without cutting it, I'm gonna ask them for the, I'm gonna ask them to cut it. You cut that damn thing. And if they refuse, I'm gonna call the judge. I'm gonna make the judge cut this deck. If you are not allowed to have a final cut in Magic the Gathering, your opponent has the final stand. However, if you are not satisfied with how your opponent has shuffled or cut your deck, you can just call a judge and get them to shuffle the deck. You are allowed to do that. And you gotta protect yourselves. I mean, it's so easy to stack something on top of the deck. I mean, let's just do it right now. I'm shuffling. Oh, oh, I see a land as I was shuffling. I just put it on the bottom. Then all of a sudden I do one of those weird shuffles where we're just shuffling the top until we put the bottom card directly on top. And then boom, I'm drawing a land. And if the opponent put it there, then that's probably something I didn't want. Now, from my experience, the second most common form of cheating when my opponent is shuffling is when they have my deck and they're 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 taking they're peeking at the cards. You know? If they're not very good at shuffling, a lot of them are not, they're like they're directly looking at the deck and you better believe they can see things. They can see everything. Of course they know I'm playing Merfolk. I'm playing Merfolk before the game began. Now there's a few things you can do. You can tell them to look away, but unfortunately in like a really big event, judges really can't do much about it. Um, it just is what it is. They're really, they're way too busy. The best thing you can do is after the match, go inform a judge that your opponent's been looking at cards and maybe they are going to investigate them later in the tournament and see what happens. But in the moment, I mean, they saw the cards and you can't really prove anything at the time. I, it, it just is what it is. I mean, I actually have a funny story about this. So I'm playing Legacy like many years ago and I'm up against Dredge. Dredge is a deck that wants to take cards from their hand, put them into the graveyard, dump their entire library into the graveyard, super graveyard oriented deck. Now I was playing Delver and I brought in Thoughtseize. Now the idea was, well, first off, I had a lot of dead cards in my deck, but the idea was maybe I can take away one of the cards in their hand that they use to discard cards from their hand to enable the entire deck. So my opponent shuffling my, shuffling my deck, shuffling my deck. Thoughtseize? And I'm, I, and I'm like, Man, if, if you're gonna cheat me, maybe you should be a little bit more inconspicuous about it. You know, maybe it could be a little bit more quiet. You don't have to make it so obvious. Anyway, I won the match, who cares? Now, if anyone is cheating through like mana weaving, they're looking at cards, I just wanna remind everybody that they suck. I mean, they, they suck for cheating, but also they're generally just absolutely terrible at this game. They don't know the rules enough. That, that's against the rules. So you might ask me, am I worried about cheating in Magic the Gathering? And honestly, for the most part, no. Uh, I think if people cheat, it's because they're terrible. They're like really bad at the game. And there's no amount of cheating that most people can do to compensate for that. Cheaters are just, they're cheating because they know no, no other way to improve themselves at the strategy. They're cheating because they don't know any other way to win. They're also doing it because they don't even know that they're cheating. They think they're just gaming the system. Like, oh, why hasn't anyone thought of this before? I'm just gonna shuffle the deck while looking at it and I can see their cards. Or, oh, I'm just gonna fake shuffle the deck. Or, I'm gonna spread out all my lands perfectly throughout my deck and I'm not gonna shuffle it at all. They don't realize that they are cheating. Let's talk about a few rules in Magic the Gathering that come up pretty often while shuffling. So first one that happens pretty often for me, 
I wish it didn't, is dropping cards. So this will very often happen where, you know, I'm folding the deck pretty close to me, maybe off to the left, and then, whoops, I like accidentally drop a card. It happens, it just, it just happens. So what do you do? You immediately call a judge. You're gonna get a warning, it's okay. You can have warnings, don't be so scared. You call the judge, call the judge over, don't look at the ground, tell the judge you drop the card, they'll get the card, they'll put it back on top of the deck, um, this is gonna be very important if it's your opponent's card. You don't want to look at the ground and see what's inside their deck. Just be honest. It's not that big of a deal. It happens. Don't worry, it's happened to me a million times. You just have to be honest in these situations. So you might be asking, you know, what kind of accessories do I use? Well, let's quickly talk about it. So what, let's talk about the sleeves. Uh, right now I'm using Dragon Shield. Here we go. Take a delicious close look at these beauties. I prefer either the night blue, because it's it's gorgeous, right? It's gorgeous in night blue, but also the umbers. I, uh, you know what? There's not a lot of brands that do brown well, but this is this is brown, and I love I love brown because it's nostalgic. It's the color of the back of a magic card. You got it? It's the magic card. It look it feels like I'm playing with magic cards even without the sleeves. So, uh, why do I choose Dragon Shield? Uh, well, I mean they're reliable. You know what? These sleeves they're great. They don't accumulate like sweat and dirt on the surface of the sleeve. They can do underneath for sure, but on the top, nothing. Not a zip. So look, look how clean that is. And believe me, Nikachu's palms, they're really sweaty. When I'm in a competition, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna hide or anything, I'm sweating bullets. And it slimes up all the sleeves, but it's never a problem. None of these sleeves stick or have any issues whatsoever. They are fantastic. And they're really durable. Like they're they're actually very, very durable. I don't, they don't split on me or anything like that. So, I mean, I've had no problem with Dragon Shields for the last like four years. I'm pretty satisfied with them. And the inner sleeves, the inner sleeves are KMC perfect sizes. So that's the inner sleeve that you can see here. You wanna double protect your sleeves because uh, these things, I don't know if it's gonna pick up very well on the camera, but they can get pretty dirty. These might be slightly newer KMC inner sleeves, but the surface can get really dirty on the inside because of dirt. Uh, and if it wasn't protected, then all the dirt would hit the card. But even worse than that, I once spilled an entire, or emptied basically, an entire mug of coffee in my bag, and it covered both my modern foil and legacy decks. It was like thousands of dollars worth of cards. They were submerged under coffee. What saved me? It was the inner sleeves. The inner sleeves protected all the cards and there were no casualties. Oh my God, the inner sleeves, a huge, huge lifesaver there, huge lifesaver. Now the deck box I'm using, I'm currently using some of the Ultimate Guard stuff. We got an Ultimate Guard flipping tray. It's a deck box if I'm not using tokens. I like the small one. The, the, it's got a tray here for my dice. I love these dice, these casino cut dice. They're beautiful, they're nice and chunky and thick and big. Oh my God, I love that big, thick boy over here. Love it. Love big, chunky dice. If you're not, if not, if your dice aren't big and chunky, I mean, you're not doing it right in my opinion. And if you're looking to pick up deck boxes or sleeve, you can do that at none other than FusionGamingOnline.com, my favorite local game store, for all your gaming accessories and singles for all the most popular games, such as Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Flesh and Blood. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. Well, that's my video for today. If there's anything new you learned, let me know what it was in the comments section below. Smash like for clean, fair magic, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, or the next land that you draw will be your last.